Years ago, we were at Tacoa Falls, Georgia with our youth group at youth camp. And on, uh, I can't remember which day it was, about midweek, um, after our Bible studies in the morning and our track times in the afternoon, I asked some of the staff there, I said, what's something really cool to do in this region? It's in Tacoa Falls, Georgia. And the staff said, you know, something we did in our training time was we took a hike up into the mountain and we found a waterfall. And they said, it's a hike, but it's pretty cool when you get up there. So we started talking it up with our youth group and talked about, uh, you guys want to go up there? It's a hike through the mountains. There's a trail to get there. It was hot. It was in the summer. And after we started inviting everybody to go, only a, a few went comparatively. In fact, about 20 of us ended up going. And we were already tired. We'd had a full day. But we started walking up this trail, up this mountain. And it took us, oh, goodness, probably 25, 30 minutes to get there. It was hot. You were sweating. There were bugs biting you, all kinds of stuff. And then when we finally got there, we, opened, we, we walked through the, the trail, and it opened up, and there was a waterfall, sure enough, coming off. It was about a, maybe a 20, 25-foot waterfall into a pool. It was super pretty. In fact, we're looking at it and thought, man, this is great. This is beautiful. Tacoa Falls, here we are. And we kind of got in there. In fact, there's a picture of one of our youth staff uh, volunteers, Mike Farmer, standing under the waterfall with it just pouring on him. And everybody was so excited. We were having so much fun. And then I climbed up. I was thinking we could jump off of it. When I climbed up, I saw coming down the mountain what was feeding this waterfall. It kind of split off. And there was this creek running all the way down. And it was flowing at an at a okay pace. It wasn't dangerous. But there were rocks and everything. And I started telling everyone, get up here. And they all came up. And before you know it, we were all in this creek just having fun. It was cool water coming down. We're playing around. And next thing you know, we're, we're sitting there locking arms and sitting down and creating a human dam. And the water would start to build up. And I'm not kidding. It would get maybe four feet behind you as we packed all in. It's about ready to push you. And then we'd break loose and it would go flowing down. And right at the bottom was another little lagoon. And we would have a couple of our youth sit there. And this big flow of water would come and knock them right off into the water. And everybody was laughing, having a good time. In fact, even now, that was probably, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. I still remember it like it was yesterday. It was beautiful. It was incredible. In fact, we talk about it. It was just so amazing, so surprising. But you know, when we got back, we walked back down, and we were tired. We didn't have the, the free time everyone else had. And when we started telling people about it, a lot of people were like, oh, I wish I would have come. Oh, why, didn't you, why didn't you tell us about it? And all I could say was, I didn't know what to expect. All I was told was there's a trail and there's a waterfall up there. It's pretty neat. You see, the truth is this, behind every invitation that's ever given, there's a little bit of an unknown. If someone invites you to go to a movie, you don't know if you're going to love the movie or, or, or not love the movie. There's a little bit of an unknown. But one thing that's true with every invitation, there's a choice, to go or to stay. One of the things I love about the Christmas account, and we've been uh, talking about it through song and singing about it tonight, is the shepherds. Here they were on this night so long ago, and they're presented with an invitation to be part of this incredible event. But if, I don't know if you've ever noticed this. In this account, there's no command of God to go. There's no command. In fact, all he says is a sign is given. A sign will be to you. Let's read a couple of passages here. Luke chapter 2, begin verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels have left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. These shepherds, the lowest of the low, they were, they were considered the lowest of the low in society. God uses angels to appear to them and announce his son's birth. 
And he does it through angels so much so that it was so unusual that it terrified him. But he didn't say go. He didn't say I command you to go. He just said this will be a sign. You'll find a baby lying in a manger. Now these shepherds took that as an invitation. But they had a choice. They could say yep we're going to go. Or they could say no we're going to stay. They chose to go, and they experienced something that was so incredible, so remarkable. In fact, notice the scripture says again, then the shepherds returned glorifying God and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. You see, they had a moment that they would never forget. They had a moment, I guarantee you, those shepherds talked about that for the rest of their lives with their family members. It was an amazing moment, and it all came from an invitation What's interesting to me is this. So many times, we think that God is playing hide and seek with us. We think, oh, I got to seek him with all my heart, all my soul. I got to concentrate so hard on God. Like he's, like he's hiding from us. Like if you just, just search long enough and far enough, you'll eventually stumble upon him. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, God shouts to us. God screams to us an invitation to come and be close to him, just like he did the shepherds. But the truth is, we have a choice. We can say yes to him, and when we do, we experience things that are beyond our our imagination. We experience things that, yes, there's an unknown when we say yes, but on the other side of that yes to that invitation, it changes everything. These shepherds were changed for the rest of their life by their experience. I was changed hanging out with some students at Tacoa Falls, Georgia, but not all of our students went. Not all of our adults went. Some of them didn't say yes to the invitation. And as a result, they don't have the same memories. They have never experienced the waterfall like we did. They'll never experience that creek running down the mountain and how much fun it was on that day to just be there with water washing over us. But you know, as I think about that, I have so many situations just like that as I've served the Lord and I know that he's working in and through me because I have a relationship with him. It's exciting. And the truth is this. When we begin to really tap into the fact that God has given us an invitation to be close to him. That invitation started so long ago with his son Jesus being born into the world. And in fact, you're here tonight celebrating that. But here's the big question. And here's what I want you to wrestle with throughout Christmas Day and everything. What are you doing with the invitation not to celebrate Jesus' birth? but with the invitation to celebrate his death and to ask him to come into your heart and save you? What are you doing with that invitation? Because on the other side of that unknown and that scary thing for so many of us is abundant life, is peace like you can't even imagine, is a relationship with God where you don't wonder where you'll be one day or wonder if God is real because he'll be as real to you as the chair you're sitting in right now. I want you to think about that. As you worship him, as you celebrate him on this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day tomorrow, I want you to ask yourselves this question. Where do, personally, where do I stand in terms of the invitation that Jesus has given me through his death and his resurrection three days later? Where do I stand? Have I asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior? Because he changes everything. He did it for the shepherds. And he wants to do it for you and I all these years later in 2015. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much for the privilege and the honor of being in your house on this Christmas Eve. Lord, thank you for the songs that we've sung. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to to stop everything and to put our focus on you and the greatest gift ever given mankind, your son Jesus. And Lord, as we begin to wrap this service up and Lord, we we get ready to light our candles. Father, right now, we pray that you would just stir our hearts. Lord, help us to see that, that you are an awesome God who had this plan for your son Jesus to come into the world for so many years. And Lord, right now, as we prepare to light our candles, Father, when we recognize that Jesus is the light of the world and when we respond to the invitation that he gives us, to ask him into our heart to be Lord and Savior, Lord, we truly become light as well. And as we share and pass that light along, it displaces darkness. It changes the world around us, and it brings honor and glory to you. We love you, Father. We pray all of this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Right.
as we sing. I want you to take just a minute and look around the room. Take a look how beautiful it is. As the light is passed from one to the next, Jesus is our light. When we respond to the invitation that he gives us to ask him to be Savior, we become part of that light and we pass that along. And what a blessing it's been to worship God tonight with you. What a blessing it's been to put everything aside and focus on our Lord and our Savior, on his birth. I hope you've had a great time worshiping with us tonight. And we certainly hope here at Fellowship Baptist Church that all of you, as you leave here to go celebrate with your family, that you will be reminded of the real reason why you're gathering, why we exchange gifts, because it's a symbol of the great gift that God gave us, the greatest gift of all. It's been a blessing worshiping with you tonight. I'm going to close this in a prayer, and then I'd like for you at the end, be careful, blowing the candles out, don't light anyone's hair on fire or anything like that. But I want, to be, want you to be reminded that as you're leaving, there's four tables on the back. We've got some of our leaders here at the church manning these tables. Grab one of those handmade um, ornaments or decorative pieces symbolizing Christ. 
uh, one per household, please. So if you've got kids that are grown and have their own household, they can have one too. Uh, but make, may you set that out and be reminded of how awesome our Savior is. Let's all pray together. Father God, thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to put everything aside, come into your house, and to celebrate you on this Christmas Eve. Lord, you blow us away with your love. And Lord, as we leave this place now, Lord, may you bless each and every one of us. Lord, may we truly be the light that you've called us to be in this world as we share the love that you've given us through your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for the greatest gift ever given. You truly are an amazing God. We pray all this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a great night.